In this lecture, we are going to look how to find probabilities for the normal distribution by making use of the standard normal tables. So what I have here on the slide is an example of the standard normal tables. And you will see from this little graph here that it will give us the area to the left of a positive Z value. So if I say positive Z value, it means that the Z value will lie from zero towards the right. Um, because it's the standard normal distribution, the mean is zero. So my Z will be anything from zero onwards. Um, this is one example of standard normal tables. You sometimes get normal tables where the tables will give you the area or the probability between zero and Z. So it will give you this area. For this lecture, I'm going to make use of the given tables. But if you know how to find probabilities from this table, you will easily find probabilities for a table notated, notated in this way. Okay, so first of all, if we get a random variable X that follows a, a normal distribution, we first need to standardize it so that we can make use of the standard normal table. So remember from the previous lecture, to standardize, we subtract the mean and then we divide by the standard deviation. And we are going to look at seven different possibilities in which we can find probabilities from our standard normal tables. So the first possibility is the easiest one. If we want to find the probability that Z is less than a positive value, then we can just read it off directly from our tables. So if we have an, a situation like this, my Z value is positive and I want to find the area to its left, then we read it off from the tables directly. So for example, if we want to find the probability that Z is less than one. So let's go to our tables. I want to find the probability that Z is less than one. You will see in this table that in the rows I have the first decimal digit and then in the columns I have the second decimal digit. So to find the probability that Z is less than one, um, I'm looking at 1.00. So in my row it will be 1.0 and in my column it will be 0 0.00. And then I look at the point where these two intersect, and that probability is then 0 0.8413. Okay, let's look at the second possibility. I want to find the probability that Z is greater than a positive value of Z. So if you look at this graph here, I want to find the blue area. Now the tables only give the area to the left of Z and not to the right of Z. So to be able to do that, I will take one minus the probability that Z is less than Z. So if you think of it in this way, uh, if I take the total area under the curve and I color it blue, and I subtract from that the area to the left of Z. Now, suppose I take the area to the left of Z, I color that red. So where the blue and the red intersect, I get the purple color. So if I take one, that's the total area of blue, I subtract from that the purple area, I end up with the blue area on the right of Z. So, for example, if I want to find the probability that Z is greater than 1.6, so if, suppose that was 1.6, I will write that as 1 minus the probability that Z is less than 1.6. And this I can find from my tables directly, so that will be 1 minus, and then I go back to my tables. 1.6, uh, if we go to the row, with a 1.6, the second decimal uh, point will be 0, so I'm looking at 0 
Then possibility three. I want to get the area or the probability to the left of a negative value. Now we can make use of the fact that my normal distribution is symmetrical. So I want to find this blue area. I can't read that from my tables directly because my tables only give the area to the left of a positive z value. So to get the area to the left of a negative z is exactly the same as to get the area to the right of the positive z because it's symmetrical. So the blue area and the red area, um, those two areas are exactly the same. Now to find the probability to the right of a positive z value, we did that in possibility 2. And that is just 1 minus the probability z less than my positive z value. So let's look at this example. If I want to find the probability that z is less than minus 1.84, then we can say that's exactly the same as the probability that z is greater than 1.84. And that is the same as 1 minus probability that z is less than 1.84. So again, we can go to our tables. Now 1.84, I look at the row with a 1.8 and then my second decimal point will be a 4. So this is the column that I'm looking at and where these two intersect, I get 0 0.9671. So my probability is 0 0.0329. Then possibility 4. The probability that z is greater than a negative z value. Now if you look at my graphs here, the area to the right of a negative z value, the blue area, is exactly the same as the area to the left of the positive z value and that's because my normal distribution is symmetrical. So for example, if we want to find the probability that z is greater than minus 3.18, that is exactly the same as the probability that z is less than 3.18. And we can find that in our table. Okay, so 3.18, I will go to the row 3.1 and the column 0 0.08. And that will give me 0 0.9993. Possibility 5. If I want to find the probability that z lies between a and b, where a and b are both positive, then I will take the area to the left of b, so that's the blue area, and I will subtract from that the area to the left of a. If we color that red, then where the two areas overlap, it will give us the purple area. And by subtracting the purple area, I will get the blue area the area between A and B. So this is our example. To find the probability that Z lies between 0.7 and 2.3, that's the probability Z less than 2.3 minus the probability that Z is less than 0 0.7. So we take the area to the left of 2.3, we subtract from that the area to the left of 0 0.7. You can look this up in your tables. Okay, possibility 6. Well, there's a probability that z lies between minus a and b. In other words, that it lies between a negative value on the left and a positive value on the right. So if you look here, uh, I'm interested in the blue area. To find the blue shaded area, I will take the area to the left of B. So that's the blue area. If I take everything to the left of B and shade it blue, 
and I subtract from that the area to the left of minus a. So if we shade that with red, where the blue and the red overlap, we get the purple area. So if we subtract the um, purple area from the blue, we end up with the area that we are interested in. Now, to find the probability z less than b is straightforward. We can look that up straight away from the tables. To find the area to the left of a negative value, uh, we cannot find that directly from our tables, but because the normal distribution is symmetrical, we say that that is exactly the same as the area to the right of a positive a value. And again, remember our tables only give us the area to the left, so to find the probability z greater than a is the same as 1 minus the probability that z is less than a. So this was um, the same as what we had for possibility 2. So we always want to have it in this form, less than a positive value for z. Okay, so if we want to find the probability that z lies between minus 1.25 and positive 1.25. I'm just going to write it here on the right. And that is the probability that z is less than positive 1.25 minus 1 minus the probability z less than 1.25. And we find this in our tables again. And that probability is then 0. 7888. Our last possibility is the probability that z lies between two negative values. Now, that is, we are interested in this blue area. But because our normal distribution is symmetrical, to find the probability that z lies between minus a and minus b is the same as to find the probability that z lies between positive b and positive a. And if you look at this probability here, that is exactly the same um, as what we had for possibility 5, where we want to find the area between two positive z values. So then it is the probability z less than a minus the probability less than b. Okay, so our example, probability that z lies between negative 2.2 and negative 0.5. So that is the same as the probability that z lies between positive 0.5 and positive 2.2. Okay, and so these are the seven possibilities to find um, probabilities from your normal tables. I would like to conclude with the following, the inverse normal distribution. Um, if z is a standard normal variable, find the value of z so that the probability that z is less than this z value is 0 0.877. So in the previous examples, I gave you the value of z and you had to find the probability. Now I give you the probability and I want you to find the value of z. So that means that I give you this area and I tell you that this area is 0 0.877 and I want to know what is the value of z. So we can do this um, by looking at our tables again. If we go back to our tables, we want to find a z value so that the area to its left is 0 0.877. So we look up the probability now. So 0 0.877 lies over there. And the corresponding z value will then be 1.16. Okay, so my z value is then 1.16 so that the area to its left is 0 0.8. 7. Another example of the same nature, if z is a standard normal variable, find the values of z so that the probability that z is greater than z1 is 0 0.025 
and the probability that z is less than z2 is 0 0.025. So what we have is we have our normal distribution And the area to the right of Z1 is 0 0.025. And the area to the left of Z2 is also 0 0.025. So this means that the area to the left of Z1 must be 0 0.975. Now, if we look in our tables, we are looking at 0 0.975. So 0 0.975 corresponds with the Z value of 1.96. So that means that Z1 must be 1.96. And because the normal distribution is symmetrical, Z2 must be minus 1.96. Now, because the area to the right of Z1 is 0 0.025 and to the left of Z2 is 0 0.025, if we add them together, we get 0 0.05, and therefore the area in between must be 0 0.95. Now this example is important when we get to statistical inference, especially for confidence intervals and as, as well as hypothesis testing.